So good, so good. Aren't you glad you're in church today? Amen. And, and I'm glad that Pastor Josiah, Pastor Marie did not close the church today. Amen. And if you're watching online, that's okay too. That's okay. We're not, I'm not throwing any shade or condemnation if you stayed at home. Um, but I, I just, I'm a church junkie. I love coming to church. And I just love coming to church whether I'm preaching or not. There have been times when I've just showed up to church here and just sat over there. My wife goes, where are you going? I'm going to church. What are you doing? She says, I'm staying home. Well, you can backslide. I'm going to church, okay? <laughs> so we know who's more spiritual in our family. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, how many of you have heard of Hurricane Hillary? Have you ever heard of Hurricane Hillary? Okay. Um, one day I want a Hurricane Benny named after him. Hurricane Benny, just... <laughs> Hurricane Perez, come on, that wouldn't be a good one, right? Why is it, they, they need a Hispanic name next time. Nino, although we have El Nino, that's right, we have that too. But you know, I'm going to blame somebody for all this rain that we've had this year. Your pastor had the audacity in 2022, don't clap yet. I think it's 1 Kings 18, is that verse, verse 22, is that, like, is that right? So you have world-class team back there. They're going to throw it up on the screen. I'm going to give them some time. I don't care what translation you put. Uh, but First Kings, it says, So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. Keep going. Keep going to whatever next verse is. Whatever next verse is. And Ahab was summoned up. Keep going. Keep going. Where is it? Uh, keep going. Where is the, where's the rain come? What verse is that? Okay. Keep going. I don't care about food and water. Keep going. Uh, yeah, keep going. I'm just, I'm waiting for the rain. Where's the rain coming? Keep going. Is it, is it, are we past you yet, Pastor Josiah? Just keep going, guys. Keep, there we go. Uh, keep going. Somewhere in there, there's going to say rain. Is it in there, Pastor Josiah? 42. We'll wait. I have nothing to do. It's raining outside. Okay, no, keep going. Yeah, yeah, keep going. And put his knees and go and look toward the sea. And he told his servant, and he went up and looked, and, and there was nothing. He said seven times, Elijah said, go back. And the seventh time, the servant reported a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, but hitch up your chariots and go. <clears throat> next one, next verse, I think it is. Uh, down, uh, go down before the rain stops you. Your pastor had the audacity to prophesy that this would be the year of revival. Come on, the year of an outpouring, the year of rain. Now watch this. You could, you could, you could say whatever you want to say. But why is it that we had more rain and a famine broke in 2023 and a hurricane that has not happened since, what, 1934 has hit California? I'm telling you, first the natural, come on, then the spiritual. Come on, we are in. Come on, the year revival, if you believe it, give God some praise. So thank you, Pastor Josiah, for flooding my house. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for all that rain. So it's so good. So you're good. You're in a prophetic house. Pastor Josiah and Pastor me have said this. What happens? Come on, on this house, come on, happens to your house. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. And so I just want to just encourage you in this season. I'm going to get right in my message. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, then Luke chapter 5. And, and that God has been doing some incredible things here at Freedom House. And your pastor preached at our church, I think, two weeks ago. And I've seen your pastors, both Pastor Marie and Pastor Josiah, I've seen them literally more so in the last probably three years explode in maturity, explode in anointing, come on, explode in grace, right? Like leadership, everything. He preached a message at our church, and he was absolutely amazing. And, uh, and so I asked him to send that video that you guys watched again about the Anaheim thing and all that, and we showed that, and I just just said, hey, right after he showed that video, after he preached, we took up an offering as a church, and we did that twice, and I just want to let you know that Church LV, come on, send an offering, come on, to Freedom House Church, come on, for your building, okay? And I'm not saying this so you say how great I am, 
my ministry have sowed into this building also, okay, my ministry. Why? Because I don't want to be a pharisaical preacher when I tell you to do something that I don't do. So when I tell you, let's, come on, let's, what's God telling you? God told me what to give. God told, okay, and we're giving that, okay? And I believe that we're going to see more than enough come in. Can I hear an amen to that? So I'm going to talk about this today. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I want of us, all of us, can, if it's on the screens, I want you to read with me. Ready? One, two, three, four, we. All right. I don't know why. Are you all hungover or something? I don't know. I know, that's, I, know, I know you're the late crowd. Okay, let's try it again. One, two, three, four. We walk by and not. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. We walk by faith. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Looks like you're walking by sight. No, don't tell them that. Don't, don't tell them that. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. So it was as the multitude pressed. I'm going to read out of my Bible because I'm bringing my paper Bible up more pressed uh, about Jesus to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking to the multitude, right, he began to speak to Simon. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. I will let down, what did he say? Let down the what? But let's go back to verse 4. Jesus said, let down your what? Somebody say plural. I know some of you don't know grammar, but that means more than one. <laughs> But what did Simon do? Simon let down what? He said, you're nevertheless at your word. Isn't that crazy? He says, at your word, I'll let down the net. Obviously, he didn't listen to the whole word. Because he would have heard the whole word, it was nets, not net. Be careful that you do everything God tells you to do. Okay, I'm going to get a bigger amen. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to help on Jesus. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to, the, to their other partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to what? I want to prophesy. I said this in the first experience. Let me say it now. I want to prophesy that your family, come on, your household, come on, this church is going to have a boat sinking blessing. Come on. I want to say it again, a boat sinking blessing coming over your life. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. If you're taking notes, write down the title, the, uh, the message, Faith Takes Me, Faith Takes Me, Faith Takes Me. In life, situations, thank you guys, situations or circumstances may take you places, but faith will take you to God places. Too many of us are so concerned about what has happened to our life or what we've gone through or situation that we're facing. If we're not careful, we will allow different mindsets to take us places we were never meant to be taken to. I was talking to one of your pastors. He picked me up today and we were driving. He said, Pastor Benny, you do some coaching. I said, I do. I'm one of the best coaches that are out there. I don't know why you're laughing. If you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? Amen. If you don't like your own cooking, why give it to somebody else? Come on now, you're hearing me. I'm, I'm trying to help some of you. The problem is you diminish the destiny in your life by how you talk about yourself. And I'm preaching better than you're saying amen right now. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. See, I'm favored. I'm blessed. I'm successful. I'm anointed. I'm called. I'm all of that before I see it. So he was talking to me, and he said to me this. He said, what is some of the biggest hurdles that when you coach people, because I coach, I coach very successful people and business people, not, not women, just men, okay? And uh, my wife is even better than me, but she coaches women. And I said 75% of the things that I encounter with people is their mindset. 
But what we do is we focus so much on circumstance situations. We say, if this would change, then my life would be better. That's a lie. Because change never happens on the outside. Change happens in the inside. See, that's why the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What does that mean? It means I'm bigger in the outside, in the inside, than I am whatever I'm facing on the outside. See, most people, when they say, oh, man, their life blew up, their life didn't blow up, their life imploded. Because people, when you see people's life, they wreck their life, it's because they had too much pressure on the outside, and it was greater than the pressure on the inside, and they collapsed. That's why greater is he that is in me, because I do not collapse, I expand. Okay, let me just deviate, so I'm going to give you a little, about, little bit of my business, my business acumen that I learned from your pastor. This is the truth right here. Mindset matters. Because you don't see things as they are. You see things as you are. So when I see something, I could see it with the eyes of faith. Come on, somebody. And I see something different. That's why the 12 spies that went in when God said, I'm giving you the land. And God sent them in not to have them evaluate if they could or not. He sent them in so they could see what he's about to give them. That's why it took two men to carry the cluster of grapes. Do you want to know why God let the giants have the land first? Because giants build bigger wells. Giants build bigger cities. So if, if, if there's giants occupying where you are, it's because God has prepared you to take what they have built... Do you know the building that you're getting was being used by the giant in retail called Walmart? And God let Walmart lease that building so that he could prepare Freedom House Church. <laughs> When you were 200 people, Walmart was leasing that place. When you were 500 people, and the reason why they stayed there is because God said, you're holding a place for my people. You got to clap because I feel something breaking. I feel something shifting. That's why the Bible says crazy stuff. It says this, he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. Some of you, you find in some situations, you need to look at those giants and say, thank you for paying the rent. Thank you for leasing the building. Thank you for holding the property. Because when I get big enough, when I get strong enough, I'm going to possess all that God has given. Hurricane Perez is in the place right now. L listen, I I'm tired of your excuses, mijo. I know, mijo, your excuses. Oh, bebocito, whatever my mom used to say. And you can make excuses that keeps you from what God has already given to you. Faith. Faith is a, is a crazy thing. I don't have faith in faith. We have faith in a God that says, I can do what I said I can do. My faith is reinf reinforced by the Holy Spirit living in me. I, I grow my faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of. I know you say God, but it's actually not that in the original Greek. Don't just take my word. It actually, from the word, it, it's Christos. It means faith comes by hearing and the word of Christ. The more I know what Christ has accomplished and done, and the more I know about the new covenant, and the more that I know that I'm in another kingdom, and the more that I know that Jesus did it, and now I just have to receive it, the more I know that faith begins to rise up within me to say, okay, Jesus, I could do whatever you said I could do. Why? Because Jesus made it happen for you. Faith, faith. One of my mentors says, your eyes tell lies. Your eyes tell lies. Because your eyes say, see, see, see. That's why Paul says in Ephesians, he said, I pray this prayer for you. I pray that you would see with the eyes of your heart. I see by the Spirit. 
I see what God is, I say what God is saying before I see it with my eyes. So now the Bible says I walk by faith and not by, I don't walk by my feelings. See, here's the problem with a lot of us. We walk with that by our feelings. So we say, well, and worship's going like, come on, lift your hand. I don't want to lift my hands. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like worshiping. Show me in the Bible where it says, worship me when you feel like it. Show me in the Bible where it says, oh, just lift up your voice when you feel like it. It says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Listen to me. Faith is... I don't deny what I feel. I don't deny what I see. I don't deny my circumstances. But rather I say, this is how I feel. This is what I feel. This is what I see. But it doesn't matter. Why? Because let the, let the weak say, I am strong. And by faith, I begin to worship. Now I'm going to give you full disclosure. Believe it or not, there are times when I don't want to come to church. I got one amen in the front. There are times when I didn't want to go to church, and I said, Wendy, I don't want to go to church. She says, you have to. Why? Because you're preaching. <laughs> you know how dirty God is sometimes? The days I don't want to go to church is the days I'm preaching. I never get up when I'm not preaching. It's weird. I'm not preaching. Man, I can't wait for church. This is awesome. This is going. Pastor says, right, man, I can't wait. I'm getting there early. And then I get up. I don't want to. I don't feel like going to church. I feel down. I feel depressed. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe it. Huh? And, 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 and what I've learned is those are usually the weekends that the enemy is hitting me with my feelings because he can't take my faith. So if I'm not trained... I allow my feelings to usurp my faith. The devil can't steal your faith. You could allow him to. I, I, you know why I come up in my church? I come up and I, I, I worship in the front because they see me. I worship in the front. There are times when I want to sit down. I don't want to do anything. And, and I don't want to be a Pharisee. So I go up there. I'm not feeling nothing. Not feeling no anointing. Not feeling no ghost. Not feeling anything. And I go up there. And my mind is saying, why are you up here? You're not feeling nothing. And I say, it doesn't matter. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake out the... Uh, Because here's the thing. People say, well, I don't want to fake it. You don't fake it. You faith it. By faith. By faith, Abraham believed. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. It said, by faith this happened. By faith this happened. By faith this happened. By faith this happened. It never happens by feelings. It happens by faith. My greatest breakthrough always started with, not me, with me feeling nothing. When I begin to minister in the Holy Spirit, people say, oh, my gosh, you're so anointed. You're... There are some times when, when I call somebody, because I hear God say, call that person out, and then God don't say nothing after that. <laughs> you know why? Because God is wondering, will you still call them out if you don't know why you're calling them out? Because this is what I want God to do. God says, call that person out, and you're going to tell them, do, 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 do. Hell yeah. Come here. Come on, lady. Yeah. Come here. Come here, sir. That's easy. When God, when God said something, it was at, at, at 9, at 10, 8.30 today. God with the Anaheim Angels captain. That's not a baseball team. The Dodgers are the real team. Anyway, that was from the Lord. That was from the Lord in Jesus' name. <laughs> I, I see the guy right here. He's a 49ers guy. So, okay, anyway. I see the guy, Anaheim hat, and, and God says, call him up on the platform. And that's all I heard. I'm like, I'm waiting for more. And nothing, just boop. So I said, Anaheim guy, come on the platform. And I'm, in my mind, I'm saying, okay, God, what is it? And God don't say nothing. He's going up the stairs. I said, God, he's getting closer. Tell me something. <laughs> this is just real ministry. I'm telling you, bro, you need to bring me to a Bible college, and I will teach you how to move in the spirit, and you will be a different. And so he's right up here, and he comes right by this microphone. I got nothing. And now I'm starting to break a sweat on my bald head. I'm like, okay, God, what are you going to do? And all of a sudden, he takes a step, and all of a sudden, it's like heaven opens up. Faith activates the next step. You want the next step without faith. But faith says, call him up. Okay, 
That's all I need to know. That's all I, now I, that's all I need to know. Call him up. Fantastic. And there he comes. See, everything by the kingdom, come on, operates by faith. Right? So I give by faith. Come on, I worship by faith. Come on, I love by faith. How many know that you got to forgive by faith? You never, feel, you never feel like forgiving that person that hurts you. Come on, give me an amen. amen. I want to do what Fred Sanford said. Do unto others before they do it unto you. Come on now, are you hearing me? Everything in the kingdom is faith. So let, let, let's go to the text really quick, and I'm going to run through this really fast for you. Number one, write this down. Faith takes us from mine to his. Faith takes it from mine to his. Jesus is preaching. He's preaching about the kingdom. He's preaching to this crowd. They force him into a boat. And now that boat doesn't belong to him. It belongs to a guy named Simon. He gets into Simon's boat. What's the point? Jesus got into a boat to use it to preach the word of God. What are you trying to say? Make no mistake about it. Jesus will use what you are skilled at to preach his word. Whatever you're skilled at, God will use for his glory. Are you skilled in athletics? God will use it for his glory, Derek Carr. Are you skilled in the arts, education? Whatever you are skilled at, God will use. Come on, somebody, for his glory. Something powerful happens when we go from mine to his. It is not my house. Come on, it's his house. It's not my car, it's his car. It's not my money, come on, it's his money. It's not my gift, it's his gift. It's not my boat, come on somebody, it's his boat. So faith says, God, I'm going from mine to his. When God said, sell your house, it's not really your house, it's my house. We sold our house and gave the proceeds to God. When God said, that truck, yes, give it to that man. I gave it to that man. That car, give it to that family. I gave it to that family. Why? Because faith says, no, I'm not going to say it's mine anymore. It is his. It's his money. It's his gift. It's his house. It's his business. It's everything. So in my coaching, I was doing a breakfast with a guy on Saturday in Corona Del Mar. And I might coach him and begin to talk to him, and he begin to tell me a revelation, which is so, so powerful, it, po- it proves this point. He said, Pastor, the business that God has given me, it's not mine, it's his. And this is what he said to me. He said, I'm not going to just tithe off of the prophet. It's his business. That's what he told me. So I prayed, and God told me, Give, give a certain percentage of the company to the church so that every year, whatever profit, a million-dollar profit, the church gets 15% and a tithe. See, you're not listening to me. Why would he do that? I'm not telling you that's what God's telling the business owners to do here. I'm telling you he recognized that it was not, it was not his Come on, it was God's. And faith has taken, he said, Pastor Benny, oh, the, I, I gotta tell you this, I gotta tell you this. I'm gonna tell you his name. Yes, he said this, I used to pursue wealth and not God's presence. Because I told him a principle that I learned. See, culture, what culture pursues, the kingdom attracts. Culture always pursues wealth, success, influence and power but kingdom men and women we pursue his presence and we pursue his presence in his presence we attract all the stuff that culture wants are you catching what i'm saying so 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 this guy begins to tell me that his business has exploded and let me tell you where he get most 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 of his business ideas that are exploding and he gave me one more and I made a phone call and this business is probably going to explode even better he says pastor you know how I get all my business ideas I said no he says I go to prayer meetings at my church in the prayer meetings I begin to pray and the people prophesy over me and I've got my best business ideas from being in church with the prayer meetings and having people prophesy over me because I'm going after God. Come on, somebody. Somebody clap your hands right now. Number two, faith takes it from them to me. Verses four through five, Jesus stops speaking to them and starts speaking to Simon. There's a difference 
there's a marked difference when Jesus starts speaking to you. Life begins to change when Jesus stops speaking to them and starts speaking to me. You know how many times I've sat, like Pastor Josiah was preaching a few weeks ago, how many times I sat in church listening to somebody speak, and I'm thinking, I hope Wendy's listening. I tell myself, I hope BJ's listening. That is good, but it's greater when I begin to hear Jesus speak to me personally. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. So what does Jesus tell a fisherman named Simon to do? Launch out into the deep. Wait a second. Jesus Carpenter tells Peter to go out deeper to fish. Jesus tells Simon to let down your nets. Jesus tells a fisherman how to fish. Some of you don't understand what I'm saying. In biblical days, you didn't fish during the morning. You want to know why? Because you use nets. Little Nemo sees the nets. <laughs> and little Nemo says, nets are coming. Run. They fished at night. That's why I said we have toiled all night. Come on, somebody, and caught nothing. So Jesus is telling them to do the thing that they're to do fishing the wrong time. See, they think daytime is not the time to fish because they have thought all along that it's only at night. But they did it at the right time. They did it with the right mindset. They did everything right, but they caught nothing. So what is Jesus trying to do? Jesus is saying to them, listen, when I begin to tell you to do something, you need to do it. In fact, I want God to speak to me first before he speaks to Wendy. Number three, faith takes us from trying to trusting. I love this. Simon tells Jesus his experience. We've worked all night, caught nothing. We worked through the whole night, sweated, did everything, have nothing. So what is Simon saying? We know how to fish and yet have caught nothing. We did it at the right time and have caught nothing. Our experience and wisdom has resulted in nothing. This is what I'm about to say. This could change your life. Simon's objection was based upon his experience. But his, but his obedience was found on fi- in faith in Jesus' word. Some of you, if you're not careful, you disqualify everything God is saying based on your experience. You know how many times I've heard people say this? I've tried this. I've tried this. I've tried this. See, faith takes us from trying to trusting. I'm not going to try. I'm going to start trusting Jesus. The question is not why try again, but the bigger question is why trust again? Because a life of not trusting in Jesus' word is a life of trying and toiling with our nets never being filled. So you got you to quit this thing called, well, I'm going to try, God, I'm going to try. I'm going to try is a powerless word. I'm going to prove it to you. Come up, Judah. I want to I use you. Come on up here, man of God. can't believe you're 14, my God. 14, handsome, so handsome can relate to handsome. <laughs> what are you laughing at him? He's handsome. Stand right over there, please, sir. Okay, so you're pretty strong. How much do you bench? Uh, 205. Okay, I bench, are you bench 205? I bench 206, so I'm stronger than you, okay? <laughs> How much do you squat? 325. 325, I do 326, so I'm stronger than you, okay? <laughs> um, so you're pretty strong, you know, strong, understand strong. So just face me, just face me, okay? So just put out your right hand, is your right hand, are you right-handed? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to hurt you, but what I want you to do is I'm going to push down and you're going you're gonna, to... You're going to push up against me, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Push, 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 push. I'm going to push down. Push, 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 push. Okay, good. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so I say this. Say, I will resist you. Say it. Okay, push hard, hard. I'm, I'm, okay, push hard. I will resist you. Resist. Now say, I will try. I will try. Say, I will try. I will try. <laughs> okay. Why did you say, whoa? Because, like, I got weaker when I said, I will try. Yeah. Jesus never said, try me. He said, trust me. Okay, some of you don't, let's do it again, because they don't believe. (laughs) They think I paid you, but I'll pay you, but, okay, say, I will resist. I will resist you. I will resist you. Say it. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, I'm pushing hard. You can feel it, right? You're, you're, okay. Now, what are you going to say? Okay. Now, you're going to say, okay, now you're gonna say I will try. I will try. I will try. <laughs> he keeps saying, oh, my God. <laughs> Imagine if you shifted your life by faith yeah. and, saw, and said, okay, thank you. Come on, give him a big hand clap. Give him a big hand clap right now. Imagine you strike try because faith takes me from trying to trusting. That's why everybody says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. Come on, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You're going to walk out of here saying, you know what? I'm not going to try. I'm going to trust God with my finances. I'm going to trust God with my marriage. I'm going to trust God with my life. Come on, help me. I'm going to trust God with my... I love this because now faith takes us from trying to trusting. The last point is this. Faith takes us from acknowledging to action. Verses 6 through 7, Simon responds in obedient action. He's not feeling it. Everything in his experience tells him it's not going to work. It's not the right time. He's not even a fisherman. He is simply doing doing it because he heard Jesus speak to him. Faith grows in you and in me when I hear Jesus speak to me. Faith comes by hearing the, hearing the word of Christ to me. We want a miracle, but God wants a movement. Before you see a miracle, there's got to be movement. We need water, not wine. We need wine, not water. It doesn't matter. Fill up the water, water pots with water. Now dip in and take in a master's ceremony. God's always looking for movement before the miracle. So now, we see that when they had done this, Simon, the Bible says that their net was full. It wasn't that there was no more fish in the lake, but they did not have enough structure to handle more fish. Read the text. There was, there was thousands of more fish in the lake. But the net, the structure, could only handle so many fish. You understand what I'm saying? The reason why we have nets called locations, campuses, it's not because there's a lack of fish. We just need greater nets. Come on, to get a greater harvest. To see more people get changed. The Bible says that their net was breaking and they called for other boats to come. And when the other boat came, all the fish filled that net. And you know what the end of the story was is this, is that Simon now looks to Jesus. Jesus, I'm a sinful man. What was his sin? In, in Hebrews, I, I got to end, but I just feel this, this pro, they're appropriate for somebody. In the book of Hebrews, it says, after, the, after Hebrews chapter 11, the whole of faith, he says, he says and, and, and letting go of the sin that so easily besets you. After all kinds of guys preach about, what is that sin in your life? What, is, it, is, it, is it this? Is it that? And, and they miss the context. The context is not a specific sin. The context is the sin of unbelief. <laughs> Not believing what God has said is what so easily, come on somebody, entraps all of us. That's why I can't allow what I see or what I feel to dictate how I believe. I got to go back to the word of God. And if God said it, I got to believe that God. I believe your promises and they're inherited by faith. Come on, somebody. And patience. So I was, I was being driven here by the hurricane storm <laughs> by one of your pastors. And so he's asking me questions. I said, let me just help you out. This is what I tell people that I coach. I say, listen, I, I call it the 3F filter. What do you mean by that? I said, so, so you believe God spoke to you? Yes. So here's what I do. When God speaks to me, the first F is family. I'm married. So I go to Wendy. I said, Wendy, this is what I believe God has spoken to me. And, and, and she's going to confirm it. If she doesn't confirm it, then it, it didn't pass the first filter. 
If it passes that filter, then I go to my mentors, my peers. I go to Mike Kai. I'll, I'll go to Mike Robertson. I'll go to my friend Ian Skonkin. I'll go to Mike Maiden. I will go to Jude Fuquay. I will go to them. I said, this is what I believe God has spoken. That's my second filter. That's my friends. Passes that. Then I told him, I said, but then there's a faith filter. It doesn't matter if everybody else has faith for it. I got to have faith for it. And that's why I told your pastor, I remember him, I, I remember, I think I told you, I told you this. I said, do you have faith for it? I said this to other people. I said, do you have faith for it? I said, it doesn't matter if I have faith for it. Do you have faith for it? And when they say yes, come on somebody, that's the last filter. Can I tell you, I'm in a house right now today. And I feel this of God so much that God spoke to your pastors and it passed the family test. And then God spoke to your pastors and they began to speak to their friends. Come on, somebody, it passed the friends filter. And then God said, I'm going to put faith in you, Pastor Josiah. I'm going to put faith in you, Pastor Marie. And guess what? It passed the third filter. So guess what, baby? We are going to a new building in Anaheim. that filter back put that put that that thermometer back up if I had a marker I would mess up your LED screen <laughs> I'm glad it's here but I've already seen it up there I'm gonna keep saying it to somebody who believes that I'm glad it's here but I've already seen it up there I'm glad I seen it. Our church already sent money, and this is just by faith. I don't know if anybody else is going to catch what I'm throwing down. Here's a, here's a Benjamin. I like Benjamins. That's my name, but that's... I carry cash in my... I just believe. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not asking you to do anything. I, I'm putting it down by faith. I just believe that that thing is filled. Radical generosity in the Bible, I'm going to mess some of you up. There's the tithes mentioned in the Bible, but in the New Testament, Jesus said you should tithe to Pharisees, but some of you are like, oh, I, I guess I don't have to tithe. In New Testament, New Covenant giving, let me give you examples. A, God, I feel that. A little woman gave less than everybody. It was called the widow's mite, but it was everything she had. She didn't give 10%. She gave everything. A woman was coming to Jesus to anoint him with perfume, and it was equivalent to a year's wages. You're not listening to me. When the New Testament generosity broke out, they sold houses and lands, and they brought it to the church and gave it to the apostles. When now, Nick, now, now, now a guy who was, who was, the, he was up in a tree. He was up in a tree. What was his name? I, I'm, uh, Zacchaeus. And you know what Zacchaeus said? I'm going to give half 50%. I'll come back and do a teaching now. Blow you away because we have settled for less than what God wants to give to us. I put that in the ground. I'm only sowing in a place where the soil is good. You could have good, you could have great seed, but terrible soil. It's not the seed, it's the soil. When you have good soil, even a bad seed will grow in good soil. I, 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 listen, symbolically, how many, how many want to believe that we're going to a new season as a church? Come on, a new season. So by faith, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And it could be a buck. I don't even care. It could be a quarter. I don't even care. There's something that, and Pastor Josiah, please bear with me. Pastor Marie, please bear with me. I know I got to go to Irvine. I don't, I don't, I, I'll just go in right afterward. I'll just go. They could be, pre, I don't matter. I, I'll go. I, I just feel this, and I, this is crazy. I hate, this is not manipulation. It is not you give and you're going to get. There's something powerful. Because the Lord just told me, take out a $100 bill, put it on the stage, and declare so that's all I'm doing. But for some of you, 
God may be saying something to you, so close your eyes. Father, I don't know. I don't know, God. I know we take an offering. It's not about the offering, God. It's about just being obedient to what you've said. God, we sowed, God. I'm going to say it. We gave $3,000, our ministry, Lord God. Our church gave, Lord God, thousands and thousands of dollars. And God, because that's what we heard. But God, we started somewhere. I don't know. This is crazy what I feel. I don't want a bucket or anything. But some of you need to begin to move. And oh my God, that's my guy from my church. What's your name again? I'm sorry. Joey. Oh, come here. These are my business people at my church. Let me, let me look, hold hands. Did you know I was going to be preaching here? Oh, I feel something. If anybody, you just pray. I didn't ask them to come up and put that money down. They just did what God told them to do. That's all. No pressure. No, I don't care if it's a buck. I don't care. See, we get caught up in the amount. God gets, gets caught up in the motive. You know you could give with the wrong motive? How do you know? First Corinthians, you can do this, but it was not with, without love. It's a clanging symbol. But when God gets the motive right, that means he got your heart. I pray for you right now, Joey. <laughs> Been sitting in my Sunday night teachings, my master classes. And the Lord is just taking you guys to a whole nother level. And the Lord is saying, are you willing to be obedient in every area? In every area of your life. I see an acceleration coming. And God says, you make the first move. And I'm going to accelerate everything. You're going after my presence. I'll bring wealth. You go after me. I'll bring influence. You go after me. I'll bring breakthroughs. You walked away from something you told me about coaching because it wasn't built on the right system. And the Lord honors you because guess what? You walked away from something that's very lucrative but it's built on new age. So Lord, I pray right now, God. You said, Lord God, what they've given up in the kingdom, you'll give, Lord God, back. It comes out of grace and anointing on you right now in Jesus' name. Whether you fall or not, I don't care, but God's touching you right now. And he's taking some stuff out too. He's going to breathe on you guys. One, two, three. Right there. Just take that. Just stay in that for a second. Anybody else? I'd, I don't know why. Just, I just said, just open it up right now. Just come put it on. I may pray. Don't, just put it right there, bro, wherever. It's okay. What's your name? Mark. Mark, thank you for serving in God's house. Father, I just thank you right now for this moment of faith. God, it's not the amount. God, it's the act of faith. God, I thank you that that there's widows, God, are going to give, Lord God. There's rich are going to give. There's, there's middle class are going to give, God. I just sense, Lord God, there's such a, there's a breakthrough in faith that's taking place. And this represents a breakthrough in faith, God. Just a breakthrough of faith. Don't let anybody tell you what to give. Don't let anybody tell you. You don't have to do anything. Just do what God tells you to do. You can just sit there and say, God, you got my heart. Can you put your hands over your heart, everybody? Say this out loud, just so you can hear. Say, Jesus, you got my heart. Let my motives, say, let my motives be pure. I want to honor you, not just with my wealth, but in my relationships, my life. I want to live for your glory, for your honor. If you have a business of anything, network marketing, you want to start a business, you have a business, can you just stand all over the auditorium? You have a business or you feel like you want to start a business, entrepreneur. You have one of the most entrepreneurial pastors that I know on the planet. And if you haven't done it already, Pastor Desai, you need to start some kind of kingdom entrepreneurship school. To raise a kingdom entrepreneurs. Be more, I know you got business, but I'm talking about this. I just really feel that. You can do with it what you want to do. But you're, you're called to raise millionaires up. Now, how many know that you're standing? It's not your business, it's whose business? It's God's business. It's God's business. Okay. 
I want to just pray a simple prayer for you. And after I do this, I'm going to make a salvation altar call. I do have to get over to, I think, to Irvine. I love that. I love that location. And then I get to stay in Orange County another night because of a storm. I love it. They canceled my flight to Las Vegas. Praise the Lord. Let the storm go for five days. Praise the Lord. My kids are old enough. Dad, what are we going to eat? I don't care. Fast. You know your kids won't die after five days of not eating? I'm just telling you right now. All they need is water. Let them go in the shower. Ah, I'm just telling you right now. Some of you are too worried. What are my kids going to eat? God, please stop. <laughs> He's kidding. No, I'm not. It's so funny when they get so hungry, they'll eat food they don't want to even eat. Okay. Just lift your hands if you're standing. Jesus, I thank you for these men and women. God, I'm taking it down for a second because I just feel such a grace coming on this house. <laughs> God, more than enough for Pastor Louis. But you're giving up houses and, and stuff. God says, I, you're going to get back a hundredfold in the time, lifetime to come, but in this lifetime also. Houses and, and family and brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord God, that prosperity is part of the kingdom. Prosper these business owners to create jobs, opportunities for other people. And for my brothers and sisters that are sitting, I thank you the prosperity, come on, belongs to them too. Oh God, I thank you. And God, I thank you ahead of time for more than enough resources for our new Anaheim location. And we declare that. Come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Come on, clap your hands if you believe it. You may be seated. The closing moments that I have, and I'll turn it over to Pastor Josiah. The greatest miracle that ever happened uh, is not a healing, although one of my guys got healed here in Orange County, verified miracle. We need to do a healing night one day, Pastor Josiah. I'll just come back for a healing night and bring him and do tests, and then we're going to see miracles explode. Can you just, can you see it, Pastor Josiah, Pastor Marie, myself, other pastors and leaders, we're just start laying hands, come on, and we're not going to wait for Anaheim. Come on, miracles are happening already here. When you hear his testimony, it'll totally blow you away, and now he's praying for people. He told me, I was, I was at the DMV here in Orange County, and I sitting by someone, he said, he said, he looked at me, God said to tell the guy, and he, tell the guy this, he turned and said, sir, I, I need to pray for you. He goes, what? Get away from me. You're weird. So he didn't press it. He went and did his thing, right? And he was walking out of the DMV, and the guy came running out of the DMV. He said, sir, when you spoke to me, Something happened. I was a little bit nervous, but I felt something, and I haven't stopped crying since you asked me that. And yes, you could pray for me right now. Come on, clap like you have some energy right now. Clap like you believe God's a miracle working God. I don't know, I just sense miracles and breakthroughs. And then let this represent the obedience of people. I don't even know why you gave what you gave. That's between you and God. And it's really not about the amount. It's the act of obedience that God spoke to you. But the greatest miracle is when somebody says yes to Jesus. Oh, God, thank you right now. With every eye open, every head up. You know that you need Jesus. You're either backslidden or you've never said yes to Jesus. You need to get your right, your life right with God. Could be one, it could be none. I don't know, but I got to just be obedient to this. And if I didn't have time, I got to go because I we had to move with God at nine at eight thirty. It was crazy. But you're in this place, and I can't let you leave. Maybe you're watching online. I can't let you leave until you say yes to Jesus. Are you ready? One. If that's you, two. God's going to speak to you. When I say three, you can lift your hand. Are you ready? One. Are you ready? Two. Ready? One, two. And shoot your hand up high. Three. Right now. High, 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 high. High. Wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Yes. So we're all going to pray this prayer together. 
Well, I didn't raise my hand. It doesn't matter. Let's welcome these people into the Freedom House family, into God's family. Are you ready? Everybody say, Dear Heavenly Father. Come on, say it louder. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, I turn and I receive salvation, forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. Say, Holy Spirit, come on in. I belong to you now. Change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Give God a big hand clap right now. Come on. Okay. All right. This is crazy. Where's the pastor? I got to pray for this one group. And it's a very delicate situation. There are women here that you've been having female issues, female problems. I'll leave it at that. And there are people here, you're married, that you've been wanting to have a child and you've been having difficulty having a child. Why would God tell a man to pray for, I, listen, I don't get it. I, and in fact, I, I don't really like giving these words, but so many people have conceived after I've prayed. I just have a faith for this. So you got to get over if it's a man or a woman ministering. Come on, it's, it's God's servant that's ministering, right? So if that's you, female issues, or you've been believing God for having a baby, that's you. Can you just stand up really quick? Ladies, you know who you are. Just stand up. Dear lady was coming. You were coming forward? Yeah? You can come forward if you have that faith to come forward. What do I need to pray for you specifically for? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's crazy time. I know. More, I, listen. Yeah, I know. Okay. Anybody else? We want to pray for you. Okay. We're going to pray for you right now. Hey, 49er man, who's, who's that standing? Okay, can you stand with her? You're going to pray for her? Okay, amen. You guys have kids? We had five kids, two are in heaven, two miscarriages. People say stuff, well, you know, you never held. No, you don't understand. I want to pray. So you know who you are, that you're believing God for a kid. And those of you that are suffering from situations. If you're st somebody standing next to you, can you just, don't touch them, but put your hands towards them. I, I just want to have some compassion just for a moment. Jesus, I thank you that you're the healer. God, you came to Sarah at her old age and said you're going to have a baby. It was hard, but she couldn't even believe it, God, but you gave her a child. And I pray for women that are standing, God, that have female issues, hormonal, growths, tumors, God. I just speak healing over you right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray a crazy prayer that those who have been wanting to have a baby by this time next year, God, Open up their wombs, Lord God. I don't know what's wrong, God, but I pray, God, that you would give the desires, Lord God, to have a baby, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, this is crazy. Now, look at me. I have a cousin. They couldn't have kids. Couldn't have kids at all. They live in Boise, Idaho. Doctors told them they couldn't have kids, so they decided, well, we're going to adopt. So they adopted a little girl. And then the same birth mom got pregnant again with twins. So they said, would you take these twins? They said, yes. So they had three kids. Follow track with me. They were happy. After they adopted those kids, craziest thing happened. They got pregnant naturally. And she gave birth to two twins. Two twins. Two plus one. And then... Shortly after that, she got pregnant again. After giving birth, I think eight weeks later, she got pregnant again with twins. They went from zero kids to more kids than they wanted God to give them. God can do exceedingly, abundantly. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. Some of you are like, please, I don't want that to happen. I, I just want one. I'll just take one, Jesus. I want to build your faith up that God... 
has got some good things in store for all of us if we continue to trust him. Can we give God a big hand clap right now? Hey, thanks so much for watching our service at Freedom House OC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always my honor, my wife's honor to bring you God's word. And I know that God's best is in your future. Make sure to share, uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.